Hello, my name is Victor and welcome to another video. In honor of Frozen 2 coming out to Blu-ray and DVD last week, this video is going to be about how Frozen 2 is an allegory for being trans. Now the first time I saw Frozen 2, this allegory was crystal clear to me. It was popping out of the theater screen at me and I was so so excited about it that I really wanted to make a video about it. But in the time that's lapsed between the last time I saw Frozen 2 and the time that I'm making this video, uh, I may have forgotten some of the finer points of the allegory, so please forgive me if I leave out some parts. Now, if you haven't seen Frozen 2, I would highly recommend watching this film because it is one of my favorite movies of all time. It was most excellent. Now, without further ado, Frozen 2 as a trans allegory. The film starts with our protagonist, Elsa, who is surrounded by essentially a perfect life. I mean, she's the Queen of Arendelle and her people love her, including her powers. She's surrounded by her family who adores her, but who expects things to never change. I mean, Anna even sings an entire song to Olaf about how things are never gonna change. But Elsa is living an objectively perfect life where everyone is happy. Now don't get me wrong, everyone's life is different and everyone comes from a different background and walk of life. I was never a monarch of a fictional city nation on a fjord. But I did have what I would consider a pretty good life. To someone else looking in on my life pre-transition, my life was pretty good. And my family was one of those families that kind of really never expected things to change. Just like Anna with Olaf. After establishing the scene of kind of having this pre-transition, perfect life, Elsa starts to hear a voice off in the distance. And that voice is telling her that this isn't really where she's meant to be. Now, Elsa acknowledges that her life is objectively perfect, and so she tries to shut out this voice because she doesn't want it to change. But even though she tries to shut it out, that voice continues to grow louder and louder and louder. I think this pretty obviously represents the first time you start thinking about the possibility that maybe you might be trans. Like, you see the signs, you hear the voice, you acknowledge it, or maybe you don't acknowledge it and try not to acknowledge it, you deny it and try to make it go away. But inevitably, the voice grows louder. Elsa then sings an entire musical number about how she's hearing this voice and wants it to go away because she thinks her life is perfect, but in the, at the end of the song, she eventually decides, you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and follow this voice and see what it has for me. Listen to Into the Unknown and try to tell me that it doesn't accurately capture the simultaneous fear and excitement that one feels when one decides to start embarking on a transition journey. Great song, by the way. After singing her big musical number, Elsa decides to embark on this journey to discover who she is, where she's meant to be, who is she is meant to be. Along the way, she encounters several different obstacles or opponents of sorts. These are the four different spirits. The wind spirit swoops around her and encompasses her in this windy gale of confusion and unknown. I think this is analogous to that overwhelming feeling of, wow, there's so much out there and I'm just really confused and I don't have a direction and I don't really know what this means for me. But when Elsa overcomes the wind spirit, she gains a direction and she knows where she's going. Next, Elsa encounters the fire spirit. It's this cute little lizard. I love the cute little lizard. Now the fire spirit is really fast and it zooms everywhere and it catches everything on fire. So it's this big overwhelming burning mass that is scary and potentially going to consume everyone around it alive. I kind of relate this to that internal passion if you will. Like, it's that feeling that is just like really, really strong and powerful, but scary at the same time. Like that feeling of, I am this. Sorry, I don't really have a great way to put all of that into words. Apologies. Now, Elsa doesn't directly face the Earth Giants on her own. Anna really is the one who directly faces them, but the Earth Giants are still out there as kind of an obstacle to overcome or an enemy to oppose. Now, the Earth Giants are these humanoid, ginormous rock monster things that are extremely destructive and they hurl boulders at stuff to break stuff and they like stomp all over the forest and people and everything. To me, the earth giants are kind of analogous to the rest of the world, specifically the rest of the world that may or may not accept us for who we are. They'll try and walk all over us and trample us and hurl boulders and throw rocks to try and hurt us. But at the end of the day, the earth giants don't really hurt our protagonist. Instead, spoiler alert, Anna uses the Earth Giant's destructive power to kind of achieve the end that they're going for in the movie, destroying the bridge. Now the last spirit that Elsa has to face is the water spirit. This spirit manifests itself as this horse made of water as Elsa is trying to cross the sea. Now 
Elsa's powers are ice powers, and they are very, very central to her character and her personhood and her being in both the first movie and the second movie. And ice is made of water, so in a way, you can think of the water just being a different form of Elsa herself. I think this lends itself very well to kind of what happens in the movie. In the movie, Elsa tries to run across the sea by using her little ice fo footsteps where her foot touches the water, it turns to ice so it's solid so she can run, and she just does this again and again and again, and the sea is just so stormy and so big and so great that it overpowers her time and again. Now at one point, Elsa makes her way pretty far into the sea, but this water horse, water spirit, tries to come and drown her. I think that this is a representation of the obstacle that we as trans people face in ourselves. The horse is really ourselves or our depression or what is internal to us that kind of drags us down and tries to drown us. But Elsa eventually harnesses the power of the horse. She says, you know what? You can't take me, you can't drown me. And she gets up and she rides that water horse. She conquers her depression or her fear or her anxiety or whatever that is that was trying to drown her. And she rides on it as its master. And that very thing that tried to take her down and drown her becomes the vehicle for her success. I think that's analogous to that fear or anxiety or depression or whatever it may be that we as trans people need to face and overcome and harness the power of in order to move forth in life. Then comes the rest of the plot points in the movie where Elsa rides the horse to Atahalan and all of these are spoiler alerts by the way and you know goes into the ice cave with all the memories and then she you know figures out the truth about her past and her people and all of that. I think this part can be a little bit analogous to as someone who is living a transitioned life to kind of reflect back on the past and see the hints of what was to come in the past. So for example, looking back on a situation or a way that I felt when I was younger and realizing that that was almost foreshadowing what I am today. I think one of the most beautiful moments in this movie is in Atahalan when Elsa is discovering why she is there and who the voice is and what was calling her there. Elsa sings through this number called Show Yourself and it is brilliant and beautiful and bold and I love it and please go listen to that song because it is amazing. Throughout the entire movie, Elsa has been hearing this voice and following this voice, trying to discover who that voice is and what that voice might have for her. In the song Show Yourself, there is this one line that I think is just so profound and so beautiful when taking the perspective of being a queer person. The line is this. You are the one you've been waiting for all of your life. Well, actually Elsa says all of my life because it's like this weird duet between her and her mom or whatever. But anyway, that's the gist of the line. This line really captures that feeling of, I've been looking for so many different things to try and figure out what this voice was. And when I realized it was me the whole time, that I'm the one I've been waiting for, like me as my self living in my gender is like, that is what I've been looking for and waiting for, rather than all of the other external things that I've been kind of grasping at straws about. So yeah, I think that's like a beautiful, beautiful scene in the movie. Love it, love it. It's, oh, it's so good. Spoiler alerts. In the end, Elsa realizes that she is the fifth spirit that they've been looking for the entire time. That she wasn't actually looking for the fifth spirit and someone else, but that she herself was the fifth spirit. In the end, Elsa decides that she's going to live authentically as herself as the fifth spirit in the wild, being wild and free with the other four spirits like she should be while Anna becomes Queen of Arendelle. But in the end, Elsa is being herself, even if that's different from what her family expected her to be when Anna sung the song, Some Things Never Change. In the same way, some of us choose to live out and authentically as ourselves, as our transition selves. But yeah, that's my take on Frozen 2 as a trans allegory. If you have seen any other parallels or connections that would kind of help this allegory go along, go ahead and let me know, leave a comment. Okay, hope you enjoyed this video. Until next time.